agree. It tears down the doctrine of eminence, which is a doctrine in the That's scripture. Right. It then places all of the prophetic signs before the rapture. It places it in your life right now. Now, there is a difference between what we are seeing right now and the fulfillment of what we're seeing right now. And you and I have done podcasts on this, and I encourage people to listen to it, on the spirit of the word and the literal letter of the word. I believe that in the spirit of the word, once God drops a truth into time, that the spirit of that word becomes immediately operational. It is immediately active and it is in place until it's time of fulfillment. So that's why I believe we're seeing more wars, rumors, wars, famines across the land, earthquakes increasing. All of the signs of Matthew 24 that point to the second coming, not to the rapture, but to the second coming, we are. Or that point to the second coming, not to the rapture, but to. The signs of Matthew 24 that point to the second coming, not to the rapture, but to the second coming. We are that point to the second coming, not to the rapture, but to the second coming. Not to the rapture, but to the second coming. Now, think about that. Here's a group of people that don't regard anything that is written in the Bible. And I think it's pretty clear that they don't believe the Bible at all. It's amazing to me that this is mainstream view. And I think that's telling because... It signifies that all these people that teach this, they don't believe, period. How can you say you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but you don't believe the Bible? In Matthew 24, in Mark 13, Luke, Luke 21, same thing. It says that the moon shall not give her light, the sun shall be darkened, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. That's the Lord Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of heaven. Right, now this is obvious all throughout Scripture. There shouldn't be any mistake about it let's see let's see let's see where does it say behold he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him the sun shall be darkened the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven you know this is in direct relation to the question being asked of Jesus, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? What shall be the sign of thy coming? And here's the sign. The sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son, the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. 24 that point to the second coming, not to the rapture, but to the second coming. Not to the rapture, 
and they shall gather together his elect. That's the rapture. Yeah, that's the rapture. That's... I, <laughs> I've never heard anybody define the rapture in any other way but the gathering together of the elect. Twenty-four. that point to the second coming, not to the rapture, but to the... Not to the rapture, but the second... This is the same thing that we read in Mark 13, Luke 21. Same thing. All right. Let's go to Second Peter chapter three. I don't know how this is confusing. Let's see here. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. The heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. This is the day of the Lord. Looking for and hasting unto, <coughs> excuse me, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Uh, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. All right, so. That's obviously when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. This is the context. Where is the promise of his coming? When he comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the day of the Lord. It is the day of God. All right. Okay, so let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. When he comes in the clouds of heaven, we are gathered together. Wow. It's so obvious. It's unbelievable that anybody would teach contrary to this. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead shall rise. I'm sorry, so the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is prophesied from Genesis to Revelation. From Genesis to Revelation all throughout the Bible Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt this happens at the end 
of the world. All right. This happens at the end of the world. All right, so let's learn a parable. Now, Jesus speaks these parables. They're amazing. Yeah, they're amazing. Uh, I don't know how people don't get it. It could have something to do with this here. Prophecy from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them. And to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Let's see here. Let's go with the parable. Oops. What I want to say. Here we go. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then has it tares? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the wheats, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Another parable. Okay. Let's. He goes through all these parables. But he's going to come back to the one I just read. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us, declare unto us the parable of the terrors of the field. So they, they're extra curious about that one. And he answered and said unto them, He that sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels remember what we read in Matthew 24 and then and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect the reapers are the angels and he shall send his angels and they shall gather together the elect as therefore the tares are gathered and burnt in the fire so shall it be in the end of this world 
the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Remember what we read in Daniel chapter 12? Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. It's teaching the same thing all throughout the Bible. Then shall the righteous shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of their Father, who has ears to hear. Let him hear.